Hey, just when you thought we were finished with topic four, here we go. We're going to talk about some other organisms. They're not your typical organisms, but they are still important. They're actually going to be our producers. So here we have some macroalga, which is just large plants in the water, right? So you do need to know the features of macroalga, aka kelp in our case. So you do need to know the blade. The blade is like the leaf of it. And then we have the gas bladder. Gas bladders, their responsibility, their job, their role for a macroalga is to keep the blades afloat. The reason why the gas bladder is so important is it's like a little bubble that holds the blade afloat so that the blade can receive sunlight because of photosynthesis. Then we have the stipe, which is like the stem and the hold fast because kelp holds on to things fast. That's their root system. So kelp is actually going to hold on to rocky substrates so that they don't just float away. So again, you should know the features of macroalgae. Now, why is macroalgae like kelp so important? Well, they are going to be important to the littoral zone. Littoral, remember, that's where the land meets the sea. It's going to make up a lot of habitats, so giant kelp forests, brown macroalgae, and it's going to reach up to like 80 meters in length. So they're pretty large kelp forests. They are a crucial habitat because they generate a lot of energy. So they're going to generate a lot of glucose, which is going to increase productivity. And they're also going to generate from detrius matter, recycling that nutrients back into the seawater. So that means they're going to be at the base of the food chain and they're going to be a big part of keeping productivity high and biomass high within food chains. Now, another marine plant. We have seagrass. All right. So seagrass, we can actually find close to the coast of Florida. So if you're in Florida, we actually have a lot of seagrass beds, especially in the Gulf. So seagrass is going to be made of a rhizome, which is the runner root system. They're going to have a flower and you'll also need to know the leaves. So rhizome is the root system. It's like a little runner under the sand. They're pretty shallow. They have flowers and they also have the leaves which obtain photosynthesis and sunlight. So for seagrass, they're going to be in primarily more shallow water. Why are they important for the environment? Well, they're going to be the foundation of aquatic communities with high biodiversity. So higher biodiversity means that there's more living organisms. So for seagrass, we're going to see a lot of living organisms that live around, um, a lot of organisms living around seagrass because of all the nutrients. Um, also, it's an important keystone species because it maintains the overall health of that coastal ecosystem. So allowing for productivity to be high and biomass to be high. Um, basically, it's going to be the most dominant producer in estuaries. So estuaries are brackish water and seagrass can survive in that brackish water. They also help absorb wave motion and they slow currents. It's going to reduce turbidity and improve the overall water quality. So remember, estuaries have very turbid water. So you can imagine that these marine plants like seagrass will reduce the amount of turbidity. That means increasing the amount of clarity in the water so it's a little more transparent. Economically, well, it's going to support industries indirectly. So it's not going to necessarily be a cause and effect. It's actually going to help down the line. So it's going to be a nursery ground for a lot of marine invertebrates and vertebrates, which means that small young fish will actually grow because there's a lot of productivity. It's in seagrass bays. So it's very important for these small fish to live in the seagrass, not just for energy, but also for protection. Um, seagrass also helps um, our land, our coastlines from flooding, weathering and erosion. All right, folks, nice, short and sweet for our last part of marine organisms. We are going to dive into biodiversity next, and then we're going to talk about sampling techniques. So stay tuned for the last few lectures or a few videos that I have for your chapter four. See ya.